All right, welcome back to Dirty Boots Capital. I'm Tony Lopes, and we have a great guest with us today, Matt DeMeo. He is an educator, a speaker, and a entertainer of sorts. So this is going to be a real fun conversation where we're going to share some important content with you folks. So Matt, thank you for being on Dirty Boots Capital. My great pleasure. Thanks for having me. And I can promise you and all of the members of your audience that what I'm what we're going to talk about will actually help them experience a personal breakthrough in their ability to learn things much more rapidly than they ever imagined that they could. Yeah. I So I love this. I, I, I looked at your profile and I said, I have to have Matt on the show. I have to. The big thing I do is I help people in terms of getting into real estate, growing their wealth, growing their freedom, doing all sorts of great things to help them achieve more. And I saw how what you offer, you know, helps people achieve more. And I saw the connection. I'm like, I got to get Matt on because, you know, one of the things we talk about in, in achieving more in our lives is education reading articles. We consume a lot of information. However, how much we act actually absorb and retain is the other question. And I saw, you know, you have a lot of research and data and, you know, uh, knowledge in that field. So I wanted to have you on. So can you help us understand what, why do people like don't absorb or don't retain the information they take in? You know, school tells you what to learn. I teach you how to learn it. When having information dumped on you doesn't mean that you're going to be able to process it effectively. And over the years, what I've done is I've researched and uh, distilled what are the exact specific little processes that take place to allow the, uh, the information to actually get in, stay in, and then allow you to retain it and retrieve it when you need it? So what I talk about is how to register the information. It's actually a formula with a bunch of R's. So the first thing you have to do is you have to register it. Then you have to retain it. So you have to be able to put it away in kind of a file. And then later on, when you need it, you want to be able to retrieve it, and that's where you get your results. Those are the four R's. And we're going to come back to that. But if I can, a lot of people complain about their memory. Now, for the sake of eliminating some excuses, I'm 71 years old, and I still do public demonstrations of memory power to live audiences, where I'll go into a live audience. It doesn't really matter how many people anymore. I'll meet as many people as I can before I'm introduced on stage. When I first start speaking, I will go around the room and call every member of the audience by name, and sometimes first, last name. I've got videos on my YouTube channel where I'll even do it with their pet's names or their spouse's name who's not there or their kid's name that I met at another conference. And I do that for two, two reasons. Number one, it proves that what I'm about to teach actually works. There's no trick to it. It's not a magic act where it's an illusion. It's I'm actually able to deliver that result. And that forces people to pay attention because they say, you know, that guy is able to do something that I can't do. And I would love to be better at being able to, to meet people and retain their names or read stuff and remember it. With your permission, there's there's actually a three things that I teach that is called the three causes of forgettery. You ask, why would you meet people and not remember their names or read stuff and then not remember it later. A lot of people talk about memory. I like to talk about the three causes of forgettery. Okay, that's what, what causes yeah. people to forget stuff in the first place? The first reason is that you don't get it. If you don't get it, you can't keep it. So for example, you're meeting somebody at a trade show or you're meeting somebody at a cocktail party or a backyard barbecue and they say, hey, I'd like you to meet my friend, Mr. Blah, blah, blah. And you go, hey, nice to see you, pal. Yeah. If you don't get the name, there's no way to keep that name. If you're reading an article, if you're reading a trade journal, reading something in the Wall Street Journal, and you're being distracted by your phone, or the kids are yelling in the background, the TV's on about news that's upsetting you. If you don't get it, you cannot keep it. To forget is to not get. So that's the first rule. Number two is that you don't care. Now, people say, oh, but Matt, I care. I care that I remember those people's names. Well, Tony, there's caring, and then there's caring enough to actually do something about it. You deal with a lot of people that say, Tony, I, I care that I don't have enough money. And then they're not willing to do what it takes, what you teach them in your in your coaching. You're, you're trying to tell them that what to do when they're coaching, and then they're, they're just not doing it. You got to care enough to actually do something about it. So I teach kind of a system of mental filing. Maybe we'll have a chance to get into that later. So. You don't get it. You don't care. But the third one is really the big one. And this is the big culprit. And that is that you don't believe. You know what most people don't believe? They don't believe that they have a fantastic memory right now. 
because I listen to what they say about themselves. They'll say things like, oh, I can always remember a face, but I can never remember a name. Oh, I'm 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 terrible at remembering people's names. I, I stink at that. Or, gee, you know, I read stuff when I could. I just never remember what I read. Or, well, I must be getting old. Or, I must be getting <laughs> the Alzheimer's. Please don't wish that on yourself. My, yeah. my, my mother yeah. died from that. Oh, geez. So you've got yeah. to be careful about what you say to yourself because saying, I have a bad memory and I can't remember people's names, that is not the result of a bad memory. That's the cause. So the three causes of forgettery, you got to get it. You got to care enough to do something about it. And you have to stop saying negative stuff to yourself. And you have to start believing and programming yourself with the right types of comments. By the way, if people just did those three things, if they took the time to pay attention, if they actually cared about the people at their meeting or what they're reading or what they're trying to learn, they cared about it more enough to actually take some steps. And if they would stop programming themselves with ne negative self-talk, their memory power would triple immediately. So that's some real fast, non-technical stuff. We can get into other stuff. In that yeah, area. no, th this is great stuff. And so for the folk, the audience, listening, watching, the reason why this is so important to understand these how your memory works and how you retain inform information and the stuff that Matt shares and teaches is so, so important is because one of the things I harp on consistently in my coaching, when I meet people, you know, just different things is, you know, something Matt and I spoke before I clicked the record button here is your network is your net worth and growing your, your network and remembering those names and where they're from and what line of business they're in and how you can help. That network is so important in helping you grow your net worth. So these things that you're teaching, Matt, are are super important. I mean, I, I'm taking notes like Matt over here. I don't, I don't know if you'll be able to see it after the editing gets done, but, you know, I'm taking notes like Matt. And I hope the audience is, too, because this this is super powerful stuff here. We all read a lot of a lot of books, a lot of trade journals, and and you're right. When I'm reading and I'm sitting down, I have a lot of distractions. I hear the email dings and dongs going off that I have a new message. Social media is a distraction constantly. Do you feel like, you know, just personally, do you feel we've become more distracted over time? This has become one of the biggest problems facing humanity not just business people. I think that kids these days are even more affected by it because they grew up with these things in their hands. Yeah. You and I didn't. And you know, when these cell phones are designed to be addictive. And so one of the classes that I teach is, is called instant concentration, how to focus your mind in a world of information overload. We have information coming at us from so many directions faster than ever before. And yet, most people seem to be dumber than ever before. <laughs> My daughter is uh, getting her MBA up at Florida State University right now. Go Knowles. And, uh, <laughs> and I, I listen to some of the things that her classmates say. And I watch interviews with other college students around the country. And it is shocking to me what's actually going on. But I don't want to get into that rant. I, I'd like to focus on helpful information. So distractions. There's a, an expression that I use that's really helpful for people. And if you want to focus, it's easier than you realize. Do what you're doing while you're doing it. Do what you're doing while you're doing it. But that's not what people do. You and I were talking about different places that we've lived. And you mentioned, you know, being up in New Hampshire. And I had lived there for a little while back in the 80s. And it's easy to imagine yourself in the middle of January and February hanging out down here on the beach in Florida, where you and I both are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the Tampa Bay area. It's easy to imagine yourself hanging out on the beach, relaxing and having a good time. Yet, when you're on the beach, sometimes you may be thinking about all of the work and all of the stuff that's piling up for you back there. Well, do what you're doing. So if it's time to work, do your work. If it's time to be on the beach, be on the beach. If it's time to read that paper, take your phone, put it away from you, shut the TV off, go to a different room, tell the kids, hey, listen, dad's got some stuff he's got to do. Give you know, give me an hour. And so the better we can eliminate some of those distractions, the easier it is to focus. The idea of multitasking for some people seems to be a badge of honor, yeah. which is the exact opposite of the truth. Let me let me prove it to you. Let's say somebody's got somebody that you really care for has got to go in for really delicate, very intricate surgery. Do you want the surgeon checking his social media status during the operation? Absolutely or not. Or checking his email? 
Yeah. Why not? Because you know that multitasking dilutes your ability to focus. And if you think about the word concentrate, it's like if I had orange juice or dishwashing soap, a concentrate means that, that they've eliminated the water. They've eliminated other stuff. To concentrate means the elimination of anything that is not the original. If you wanted to dilute, and that means to make weaker orange juice, you get that frozen can of orange juice to dilute it, you pour water in it. But it doesn't matter what you pour. You could pour milk or beer or wine or, or, or whatever into it. It's going to make the quality of the orange juice weaker. So it doesn't matter what you add to it. You're, di you're diluting it. You're weakening its power. So the more you multitask, the more you distract yourself, the weaker your mind becomes yeah. because you've got this much strength. But if you're using it on this many things, yeah. this is the only strength you've got left. You know, so if you've got uh, the ability to handle 10, you know, your, your mind is operating at a 10. Yeah. And you've got eight other things happening in your life at the moment. Your mind is only functioning at a power of two. So that's super important. And and I again, I'm taking notes like Matt over here. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, these are like the little things I like. I'll create like little post-it notes and I'll post it on my either my my monitor or my desk somewhere. But what you say, do what you're doing while you're doing it. Stay focused. That's like just something simple. Again, for the audience, write it on a little post-it note. As a simple reminder to yourself, post it on your desk, your screen, your coffee table. I don't care where, wherever it's going to help you most. That's why Matt is here. That's why I'm here. We're trying to give folks, you know, some little tidbits to kind of help them, you know, achieve more in, in their life. This this world is extremely crazy and we're out there trying to help as many people as we can. And so do what you're doing while you're doing it. Super important. And I want to focus on what you just said about being focused and concentrating on what you're doing, whether it's reading a book or an article or something like that, because one of the things I struggle with personally, so this is this is me, and I'm sure it's many out there as well, so I'm going to bring it up. When I'm reading an article or something authored by somebody else, I'm trying to find truth. Like, is there truth in this article? In the world of misinformation and AI-generated articles and the media where it's fear mongering. I'm trying to understand where is truth or is this something that's being propagated to to benefit the the author, to benefit the media? That's one of the things where if you have better focus, if you have better concentration, I'm thinking, yeah, you tell me, I'm thinking you can find truth quicker, faster, easier. Well, it, you you kind of touched a nerve with me here <laughs> and I I I I'm not I am not going to get political. However, truth is a topic that's come under attack. And, you know, truth has become hate speech, but that's a separate issue. Let's talk about how to absorb something that you're reading differently than the way you may be going about it now. For example, you're the author of, of a book and your book is not a novel. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a storybook. It is, in a sense, kind of a textbook. And so a person needs to read a book like you wrote or books like I write differently the way they would read a novel. So if you're a fan of romance novels or mystery novels, you're going to read a textbook differently. A, a, a big part of my audience, especially on my YouTube channel, is college students. Uh, you know, they're because they're moment to moment, their uh, ability to learn things is being tested. Sometimes when we get to an adult age, we don't feel like we're being tested quite as much, although the tests have far more serious financial consequences. You're right. Um, You're absolutely right. What the, the way most people read a textbook is wrong. They start at the beginning and they read the chapter the, and they go straight on through first page, second page, third page, fourth page. Very little of the information is, sticks. What I recommend that a person does is when you first open the, the book, do one chapter at a time and just open the book and flip to each page in the book. I've got one of my books here on how to remember people's names. And so what you want to do is just literally, you're going to just start turning pages and looking at what's on each page. That's all you're going to do in the first pass. Second pass, if it's a textbook that has a quiz, because some textbooks, especially for college students, have a quiz at the end of the chapter. Read the questions at the end of the chapter because that is what the author expects you to get from what you're about to read. Then go back through the chapter again and just look at the stuff on each page 
that's in bold print. Anything that's extra bold. Look at the titles and the subtitles on the illustrations. So what you ultimately want to do is give yourself multiple previews. And the reason is that the very first time that you ever are exposed to something, it doesn't stick at all. You need to have multiple exposures, but you can't be overwhelmed with your first exposure. So if you just start at the beginning and start to read through, you don't know what to expect. You don't know how long it's going to be. You have no sense of where it's going. So you're not, you don't have any kind of radar. You don't have any kind of a map. But if you give yourself a little bit of a preview of what the chapter is about, and you might even do this with a newspaper article. Sometimes the newspaper articles will have different uh, bold print written part way down, or they'll have illustrations or, or photographs with a caption underneath it. Take a look at anything that's in bold print first, then go back and read the article. Because now what you've done is by giving yourself a little bit of a preview, you've set your mind up to receive the information in a much better way. And I guarantee that by giving yourself those multiple previews, you'll absolutely retain the information far better than just passing through once. This this makes sense. Not not to not to cut you off. I mean, I'm I'm thinking about it and I'm I'm thinking this is exactly how we raise kids, right? You don't just tell a child once, no, don't do that. You, you, it's constant reinforcement going back through that book and saying, okay, this is the teachable moment, constantly reinforcing that teachable moment. So we do it with our kids as we raise it. We should be doing it with ourselves as we're reading a book to be able to retain that because I, I talk a lot about reading books. I mean, there's such a cheap, cost effective, if not free way to, uh, to educate ourselves. Uh, so I'm a huge, I mean, I have stockpiles of books in front of my, my TV, my coffee table. <laughs> I, I, I'm constantly getting yelled at by my girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> you got to move your books. Uh, I, I'm such a huge fan of taking in that information. I'm so glad you're sharing this, this method with us. You uh, mentioned because- something about teaching your kids and, uh, and about the importance of repetition. And there's actually an expression that I'd like to give you and your audience. Repetition is the mother of learning. Repetition is the mother of learning. (laughs) Repetition is? The mother of learning. (laughs) (laughs) I say it in a funny way like that, but to, to make an important point. Now, a lot of people, the only way they were ever taught to memorize stuff was to repeat it. And they repeat it blindly over and over again. That is called rote learning. And unfortunately, that's the way most people learned the multiplication times tables. You know, uh, four times four is 16. Four times five is 20. And let me tell you something. As a little kid, when I was learning to do that, I still remember how painful it was. I can still visualize myself helping my mother doing the dishes as I would wash and my little brother would dry and my mother standing there making me recite the multiplication times tables. It left me for many years with a permanent scar, a fear and a distaste for math. Blind repetition is not the answer. So what is the answer? I teach visualized repetition. The way I teach people to learn things is I observe how people learn things on their own. And then get them to do those things on purpose. Let me give you an example. When you go to somebody's house that you've never been to their place before, the very first time you go, you have to pay very close attention to the landmarks, to your map, to if you're using a, a, an app to get there, you have to pay very close attention to all of that. The second time you go to the same place, you notice, oh, I remember Oh, that big tree. I got to turn left at that big tree. Oh, there's the gas station. I got to turn right at the gas station. By the fourth and fifth time you go to that same place, you no longer see the tree. You no longer see the gas station. You're on automatic pilot. You just go. So what I do is I bring you all the way back to when you're first learning how to get to that person's house. There's two words that allow you to have a super powerful mind. Those two words are imagination and connection. Our mind is designed to create images. The more clearly you can see those images, the easier it is to retain them. People say, well, I can't even remember what I had for breakfast the other day, but I can remember stuff that happened years ago. (laughs) Why? Because what happened years ago has left some sort of an impression on you that you can see it in your mind. But if the other day for breakfast, you were eating Uh, a dead frog, you would remember that 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Why? Because it would because it's a clear picture. So unless you are unless you are deliberately making these pi- pictures, you're not going to see them. It's like the fourth time you're going to that guy's house, you don't yeah. see the tree and you don't see the 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 gas station anymore. It, yeah. it happens too fast. You're not even aware that you're doing this. So what I do is I get people to slow down and do stuff that they naturally do on purpose instead of haphazardly. So the first thing is I'm going to teach you how to make pictures. And we'll, and we'll talk about uh, using this for people's names in a minute, if you like. The second thing is that your mind is a connecting machine. Your mind takes new information and connects it to stuff that's already there. And you can hear this in the way very little kids learn. They'll say, Uncle Tony, you mean it's like, you mean it's like, yeah. like this is like that. There's a connection between these things. A a word that people use a lot is association. However, if association was a good word, you'd be able to use it better. Connection is an easy word to understand. When I was little, we played with Tinker Toys and Lincoln Logs. These days, kids play with Legos. You can build whatever you want with Legos. The same thing is true. So I teach people how to make very clear images, see them in their mind, and then connect it to what they want to learn. And an easy example of this, and people are already doing this, is with people's names. And if you pay attention to little kids, you'll see how little kids do it. And that, and nobody taught them to do that. Yeah. I teach something called natural learning, how to use your mind the way God designed it. So if you understand what the process is, then you can get a handle on it. For the audience, this is not foo-foo stuff. And and I'll tell you why it's not foo-foo stuff in terms of, you know, the imagination and the connection. Sports professionals use this all the time. This has been taught for, for years, if not decades, in terms of, you know, a football player, professional football player or a golfer going out there onto the field or going to make that putt. They take these professionals, they take a quiet moment. You may see them sitting on the sidelines or having a quiet moment with themselves and they're just thinking it through. They're imagining themselves. You'll see them oftentimes. And I watch it. Like when I watch football, I, I like see certain things that others may miss because this this is my world. You know, I'll see people like sitting on the sidelines. Their eyes are closed. They're just kind of going through the motions in their head. Like, how am I going to kick this field goal? And they envision themselves, you know, taking that run up to the ball, kicking it, seeing it go straight through the goal posts. You know, they see all that. They see, you know, the other players rushing towards him. You know, they visualize that. They make that imagination and that connection in their mind first. And then they go forward a little bit behind the scenes with me. When I go on stage and I do speaking gigs and things like that, and I've learned this from others, like the like the great Tony Robbins. He he did this. He shared this. And it's something I do now. If I was to just kind of go on stage and like start talking to somebody, I want to be like monotone and hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? Da, da, da. It just doesn't really come across as powerful as I want it to. So before I go on, I actually, I take a quiet moment. Honest to God, I take a quiet moment. I have a song that I play in the background. It's Van Halen right now. So it's a very motivating song for me. So I'm hearing it. I got my earbuds in. I'm hearing it. I'm not on stage yet. I'm just like in the back, just absorbing this. And it's my imagination creating this environment. And I see myself going on stage and the crowd is, you know, clapping. And I'm like, it gives me energy. I'm creating that that imagination and that connection with the crowd such that when I do go on stage, I'm already jazzed. I'm already pumped. I know what I'm going to talk about because I've already psyched myself up. I'm on stage because I'm the one who who knows the most in the room about that particular topic. So I'm not I'm not afraid. Uh, I'm just ready to connect with the crowd. And it comes across so much more powerful than if I hadn't done that imagination and that connection prior to it. Does that make sense? What good examples you used? You know, relaying it back to professional sports, the power of visualization. Uh, What you talked about in terms of being a good speaker on stage, this is something that one of my favorite things to do is to teach people to be good on stage. Mm -hmm. And I always talk about that in your quiet moments, you know, rehearse your presentation and go through it and see yourself doing it perfectly. Because what what a lot of times people do is they they get down on themselves and they really mess themselves up because in their imagination, 
they see themselves doing badly yeah. or being embarrassed or doing poorly. Well, that's not what you want your subconscious to be focused on. And just like you said, with a golfer imagining the putt or the kicker imagining that field goal, absolutely. Because what you're doing is you're now sending those signals to your subconscious to get the automatic parts of your body to function. Because you cannot be conscious when you're putting or you cannot be conscious when you're kicking. You have to let your training, you have to let that subconscious automated system that you've taken the time to create in yourself, you have to let that take over because there's, otherwise there's just too many things to think about. I've worked as a professional musician for decades. And uh, for a long time, I would teach people uh, keyboards. I'm, I'm a, uh, I've been a, a hard rock organist. When I teach somebody how to play a really fast run, at the beginning, I teach them how to do it really slowly. Get your fingers used to moving in this pattern and do it perfectly, really slowly and then add the speed later. Because when you're playing in a live situation, there's too much other stuff going on. You can't be worried about thinking about what each finger is going to do. You've got to let yourself kind of go on automatic pilot for that stuff, yeah. which is a different process compared to going into, an, uh, into a room and, and learning and remembering the names of the people that you meet or at a trade show. Yeah, this is, this is so powerful. I, I hope the audience you know, really absorbs this, goes back and, and watches it and takes takes a bunch of notes like I've been doing here. This is this is fantastic what what you teach, what you uh what you help people with, because all of this tends to help people be more more productive, more powerful, achieve more wealth, just achieve more in their life. Whatever it is, it could be wealth, it could be better health, it could be something else, right? Personally, I don't care what it is. I'm just out there like you trying to help people achieve more in their life. And I so appreciate having you here. Help the folks um, understand you have a YouTube channel. You have a website where you do your publications and your learning. Some of that content is free. Some of it's low cost, which I love. Uh, thank you for providing free and low, low cost stuff because I think people need it. Uh, and uh, are looking for it. So help us understand where we can find you on YouTube and your publications. So Tony, I'd like our viewers to come visit me at my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash be smarter faster, because I teach techniques that help people to be smarter faster. Makes sense, right? Yeah. And absolutely. then an, an easy name to remember is I also have a site where I offer both no cost and low cost publications. That is just www.besmarterfaster.com. And so when people go to my YouTube channel, you're going to see a, a wide variety of different videos on everything from how to read a textbook differently than the way you read a novel, how to read faster than you ever did before, how to remember stuff. Like my, my two re most recent videos are um, memorize what you study like the world's smartest people. And then the follow-up to that is supercharge your memory to remember what you study like the world's smartest people. So I teach a, a basic memorization tactic followed by a way to supercharge that tactic. Too much information for one video, so I split it into two. But you'll also see uh, another video that I just recently did is called Don't Study When You Feel Like It. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense, right? You, you Don't study when you feel like it. You know why? Let me ask you this. When do you ever feel like it? Yeah, never. <laughs> never. So if you study when you feel like it, you're not going to be doing very much studying. That's right. And so what I what I want people to understand, and but and I get really practical, I get really granular with this stuff. Um on my publication uh, uh site on besmarterfaster.com, you can download copies of my book. I have a, a, a I've written three books, they're on Amazon. Here's one of them. If you want it in paperback, you can get it from Amazon. But if you want to be able to download it and read it on how to remember people's names, this is one of the most important human connection skills. Everybody says that they're bad at it. I can teach you how to be really good at it. And the best part is it's a whole lot of fun. And then I've got another book called Straight A Strategies for Successful Online Learning. You know, more and more students are taking online classes. Yep. And you know, as a result of the lockdown, 
which almost universally was a negative experience, there are a few positive things that we learned about ourselves from it. And that is that we don't necessarily have to go somewhere to be able to get a paycheck or to be able to get a degree or to be able to get that information. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can have that information delivered to us online. And unfortunately, students really aren't prepared for the unique challenges that learning online presents. Learning online is a different experience than sitting in a classroom. In sitting in a classroom, uh, you're, you're, you're compressed. You have rules. Uh, you've got a specific time you got to be there, a particular place you've got to sit. You've got a certain decorum. You got to dress a certain way. There's a whole lot of stuff that you're forced to do. Online, it's not like that. And so that level of freedom eliminates a lot of your ability to focus and concentrate. It eliminates your discipline. And so because of that, there are unique challenges that people face when they're forced to learn things online. Come visit me on my YouTube channel at Be Smarter Faster, or come get some of my free and no cost, low cost reports at BeSmarterFaster.com. Matt, thank you so much. This uh, tons of information. I hope folks, uh, you know, rewind, watch this again, take notes, go visit you on your on your YouTube channel and your website. Be smarter, faster. I mean. What the heck? Who doesn't want to be smarter, faster? I know I do. So I'm going to be checking out some of your publications for sure. Matt, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you very much, Tony. As I leave every uh, interview, everything I teach takes a little bit of work and effort, but it is absolutely worth it. Always remember that the fastest way to get to the top is to get off your bottom. I love it. Thank you so much, Matt.